Epistasis is when the expression of alleles at one locus masks or modifies the expression of other alleles at another locus. But first, let me clarify that a locus is the physical position on a chromosome in which a gene is located, as you can see in the picture. In this video, we will discuss how the yellow coat color gene and the black coat color gene interact to determine one trait, otherwise known as a phenotype, in a Labrador retriever. There are six different types of epistasis. However, we will just be covering single recessive epistasis. In the following pathway, the letter A is to represent the yellow coat color gene. The letter B is to represent the black coat color gene. The capitalized letter will be representing the dominant allele, and the lowercase letter will be representing the recessive allele. In single recessive epistasis, if the first locus has a homozygous recessive allele, it masks the expression of the second locus allele by not allowing enzyme A to be produced. In other terms, if the recessive genotype of AA is present, it stops the pathway from continuing, as seen in the diagram, and returns back to the yellow coat color trait to be expressed. If any form of the dominant allele of the yellow coat color gene is expressed, whether it be homozygous or heterozygous, it would not mask the second locus, thus allowing the dog to produce enzyme A, moving down the epistasis pathway to the second locus, the black coat color gene. This part of the pathway will follow the same rules as stated before. If the genotype of the second locus is recessive, then the enzyme B will not be produced, resulting in a black coat color phenotype and at the end of the pathway. However, if a dominant genotype is expressed, whether homozygous or heterozygous, it will allow enzyme B to be produced, allowing for the continuance of the pathway to a phenotype of brown coat color. Now that we understand this pathway, we'll use it to determine the genotypes and phenotypes of the offspring produced from a dihybrid cross, meaning the offspring from two individuals that are heterozygous at each loci, resulting in a brown coat color phenotype for both parents. From the table, one can see that nine offspring display a dominant genotype at both alleles, meaning both enzymes are produced and brown coat color phenotype is the result. Three offspring display a dominant genotype at the first gene, but are homozygous recessive at the second gene, resulting in a black coat color phenotype due to the lack of production of enzyme B. And four offspring will display the yellow coat color phenotype since they display the homozygous recessive gene at the first loci, inhibiting the production of enzyme A. This results in a phenotypic ratio of 9 to 3 to 4, which is expected from a dihybrid cross exhibiting single recessive epistasis. This is a cross between one parent who has the phenotype of brown coat color and one parent who has the phenotype of yellow coat color. Since this cross is not a dihybrid cross, we should not expect the 9 to 3 to 4 ratio that is usually associated with the single recessive epistasis. As you will notice, only two phenotypes arise from this cross, brown coat color and yellow coat color. This is due to the fact that 8 of the 16 offspring have a recessive allele at the first locus, causing a stop to the pathway and the resulting yellow coat color phenotype. The other 8 offspring have dominant alleles present at both loci, causing both enzymes to be produced and yielding a brown coat color phenotype. This leaves us with a phenotypic ratio of 1 to 1. 